I'll admit, I'm a sucker for high school dramas. There's no particular trigger for me. My high school experience was neither traumatic nor exceptionally memorable. I just like that a high school is a closed-circuit community with a hierarchical structure. It gives filmmakers a universal touchstone to work with so they can jump into the action without all that pesky character development. And if there's some sort of horror element in your high school, shut up and take my money. In 1996, when Wes Craven released Scream, a loving homage to When a Stranger Calls, Halloween, and, well, Wes Craven, I was immediately hooked. The film is generally remembered for its meta-analysis of the then-defunct slasher genre. There are certain rules that one must abide by in order to successfully survive a horror movie. But beneath that is a fine high school drama about a girl with PTSD struggling with sexual intimacy as she tries to uncover the mystery of who has been killing her friends. I first saw Scream in theaters on opening weekend, with an audience of around 10 people. God, look at this place, it's the town that dreaded sundown. By the end of its run though, Scream had grossed well over $100 million, but was then the benchmark of a bona fide blockbuster. It was the last time that genuine word of mouth and not astroturf hype not only saved a film, but propelled it to the mainstream consciousness. With success, of course, comes scores of sequels, knockoffs, and series adaptations that Hollywood hopes for in all of its... Uh, properties. As beloved as Scream was by his fandom, everything in its wake felt extraordinarily like a cynical cash-in, even the good stuff. And maybe that's appropriate. Scream was, after all, pretty cynical in its tone. They found Principal Henry dead. He was gutted and hung from the goalpost on the football field. Let's go over there before they pry him down! But it never got the loving tribute a film that recognized the quality of Scream underneath its collection of up-and-coming actors, hyper-awareness of the genre, and hip, cynical Gen X attitude. Until now. Fear Street 1994 is Netflix's attempt to wrest some summer hype away from Cruel Summer with a mini-series of feature-length adaptations of R.L. Stein's novels of the same name. Stein's novels were a loosely connected canon based in the cursed town of Shadyside, your typical everytown USA, but with more murder. After a long and arduous journey from the page to the screen, the series is finally dropped in the form of a fond homage to the 90s. And what better way to pay homage to 90s teen horror than by honoring the film that saved it? Yeah, 1994 opens with the typical stalk and kill sequence that opens every post scream slasher. But writer-director Lee Janiak, who worked on the Scream TV series, crafts specific shots to let Scream fans know what kind of film this is going to be. Or so you'd think. In the best easter egg fashion, if you've never seen Scream before, don't remember it all that well, or just didn't like it, the homage is not terribly invasive. You can enjoy Fear Street on its own merits, but if you are a Scream fan, you're rewarded with a much richer experience. Like all good tributes, it simultaneously says thank you while taking the baton and saying, I've got this from here. Unlike Scream, where Drew Barrymore unmasks her killer before the final blow, only for the camera to move to the knife so the audience is kept in the dark, Fear Street copies the shot and then turns it on its ear, revealing Heather's killer in the opening scene. Wait, if it's not a Scream-style murder mystery, then what is it? And that is how Fear Street 1994 hooks you. Just as its predecessor did with Halloween, Fear Street 1994 recreates certain staples of the genre and gives them their own 2021 twist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. It's the Ten Crack Commandments. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the Ten Dual Commandments. A surface-level exploration of the main character's psychology might have been enough for audiences in 1997, but in 2021, most audiences, especially younger horror audiences, expect some sociological subtext. Well, we are not... The reject pile. The curse of Shady Side is represented early in the film with shots of rundown and boarded up buildings, graffiti, and Radiohead's creep playing over the montage. It's not subtle. While Scream portrayed his teens as average kids just going to school and sneaking beers, 
It's clear from these houses that they are not average. Even in 1996 dollars, these houses would break the bank of an average family. But Fear Street gives us a clear delineation between the lower class kids of Shadyside and their upper class rivals in Sunnyvale. If you're getting a Springfield, Shelbyville vibe here, you're not alone. The rich kids from Sunnyvale are not subtle in their disdain for Shadyside either, triggering a big brawl early in the film and becoming the catalyst for the film's B-plot. Also, since we're in 2021, we don't need to rely on subtext for queer representation. It's right there in the lead characters. Although the by erasure is not a great look. At least I know who I am. Exactly. <laughs> but I guess June is over. We do get some nice by lighting though to make up for it. Like Scream, the film relies heavily on its white suburban soundtrack for mood and tone. In fact, a quickie check of the Twitter discourse in the 24 hours since Fear Street 1994 dropped shows that the soundtrack has generated the most buzz. But while the pop music is laid on thick throughout the film, it never quite descends into nostalgia porn despite jumping from song to song like a frustrated teen trying to find the Natalie Merchant song that fits their mood. Fear Street 1994 is the first of a trilogy of films that will drop on Netflix, but on its own it's a worthy successor to Wes Craven's genre-breaking hit. Building on its style and tone, without simply standing on the ashes of the genre as so many subsequent attempts did. Hey, if you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. There is so much more horror to talk about, and I want to know what you thought of Fear Street. Is it the heir apparent to the slasher genre, or just another flash in the pan?